Hello, folks, and welcome to another great edition of Bite Mark Masters. My name is Lewis Johnson, and this is season two. I've been waiting forever to say that for a while now. Hey, uh, I also wanted to ask, if you like us, please share us uh, with friends and family on Facebook and, and let everyone know that we're here. We greatly appreciate it. I got a special guest, Larry from Positive Avenues. Larry, welcome. Welcome. Uh, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, go ahead and share us, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Positive Avenues, will you? Well, I'm glad to be here. Positive Avenue is a homeless shelter for mental illness and people that have handicap and people that have nowhere to go. It uh, opens in the morning at 8 o'clock, and the uh, uh, second shift closes at uh, 6 o'clock. Hmm. Where exactly is Positive Avenue? Oh, uh, it's below the community table. Here in Eau Claire? Yeah, in Eau Claire. Oh, okay. Great, great. Well, today we're going to be cooking a little gumbo, and uh, Larry, you got a special treat for us as well. That's why I got you here. What you were doing? Uh, jalapeno cornbread. Jalapeno cornbread. <laughs> Good God Almighty. All right, why don't you go ahead and get started. Show us what you're doing. Okay. thing I do, I take my milk, pour it into my cornbread, by the way, you can use any kind of cornmeal that you want to use. I was just going to ask you, are you, what kind of cornbread are you using, cornmeal? Uh, regular cornmeal, just okay. plain cornmeal. I add the rest of my stuff into it. Okay. So I add a little garlic powder. All right. A little onion powder. Mm-hmm. A little sugar. Sugar, yes, sir. Yeah, it's good to that sweetness taste. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> And then I add my jalapeno peppers in it. Jalapenos? Oh, man. You're talking about last thing I music. add in is my eggs. I already okay. beaten. Okay. I beat it until it's nice and smooth or until it's the textures that I want. So I start off beating it slow due to the fact it will go all over the place if you don't do that. Okay. Yeah, I tend to make a mess myself every now and then. So <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. So I do it nice and slow and then and work my way into a nice consistency so, there. Right. I try to be careful with everything I do, so well, especially when cooking at the uh, Positive Avenue. Okay. I have fun doing it, you know. Speaking of Positive Avenue, what kind of, uh, what kind of people come in that way? I mean, uh, Mostly people from all over the United States because they say Eau Claire have a better facility for people that's, on, that's uh, anywhere in the state. Mm -hmm. they, so they come from maybe California, Hawaii, they come from... Uh, Texas, we have people from uh, all over. We got moms, we got different nationality people down there. Okay. And it's like a friendly place, a home for, uh, especially if you got a disability. People don't judge other people because you got this disability. Okay. So we can become one nice family. One nice family, I like that. So uh, what do you do specifically down there then? Well, I'll get down in the morning, I open up at 8 o'clock, I cook uh -huh. breakfast for the staff. Okay. Because by that time at the soldier house, people ha already have, uh, they sleep at the soldier house. In the morning, we open up at 8 o'clock and be a lot of people pile up the door and I open up at 8. I have donuts at the, at the table, I have coffee ready, I have the milk and stuff in the refrigerator. Just in case people might want to eat uh, cereal or anything, I have all that ready for in the morning. So I get there pretty early. I'll be there like 5, between 5 and 5.30. So. Okay. And then I uh, get the dishes ready or my uh, garbage out or clean, make sure the place is clean for when people come in there in the morning. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get my meat started for the gumbo. Okay. So in here I got uh, goat meat. And I'm going to get this frying. Yes, you heard me right. I'm doing goat meat. I love a good, uh, <clears throat> some goat. I've, um, my first wife actually was from Kenya and she got me turned on to goat and ever since then I've been, I've been pretty much hooked. This will be the first time I tried goat meat. Oh, okay, well you're in for a treat. <laughs> and here I already got some, uh, some onions going and just some jalapenos that you already cut up for me, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, we're gonna wait for that water to come to a boil. So after I get my cornbread mixed up to the consistency that I want, I spray my uh, glass bowl down with Pam, and then I pour the uh, mixture in the bowl, in my uh, cooking bowl. Okay. In the pot? In the pot. So. All right. I try to put it in the middle so it's spread evenly all over. I went ahead and added some sausage, uh, some beef beer uh, sausage in there with some cheddar in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my, my own version of it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's when I cook, I do my own version. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, better than your own version, especially when you taste it. Uh, then I shake my bowl uh, to even it out. 
And then after this, I throw it in the oven. Well, I cut my onions up, I cut them through the middle, and then I chop them from the side, which is easier for me because it's consistent of what I cook out because I like little pieces of onion cut, chopped up. Your onions are done? So what? All right, we're going to wait for that pot to get just a little bit hotter, and then we're going to go ahead and add it in here. You can hear it sizzling already, but... I want it just a tad bit hotter. We want to get the, the goat meat a nice tender brown. We're going to cook it to about a medium, medium well. And then we're going to add it into the, the gumbo. We also got the uh, crab and some mussels in here. A um, couple different types of sausage. Uh, vegetable blend. And then of course, you can never have enough crab in the crab. <laughs> So I um, put in a sausage. I got some of the vegetables in there because I, I don't mind the vegetables in this situation getting soft and mushy because this, this uh, meal to me is primarily a meat right. dish. You know, it's not more so for the vegetables. I will be putting the corn in the cob chunks, which I have here, and they're closer to the end, okay. but mostly a meat dish. And so you want to do the timing on this. So the goat meat is probably going to be the longest cooking uh, meat in there. The crab, the mussels, the shrimp, all of that's going to take a hot five minutes, if not less, and it should be done. So I got the sausage in there. I want to get a nice little brownness on them. I got them, as you can see, some of them are still primarily frozen pieces. So it's going to take it a little bit longer, which is quite all right, because by the time this is ready, the rest of it should be ready, or close to getting ready. They just add it all together. Complete a dish, complete a dish. I'm sorry folks, normally I tell you what the temperature is. Right now I got it at about a medium, medium high. And uh, I've actually turned it up just a, a hair a bit higher than that, right above medium high, just so that it can cook evenly and thoroughly. Add a little butter into that. And let the butter caramelize and help the, uh, the flavor of the meat. And all I did for the goat was just add some salt. I didn't do anything else, just add some salt to it. Because beef, uh, goat actually tastes like beef. It's a really, really beefy flavor. You know, it actually tastes more like beef than beef. <laughs> my first time trying it out. I'm going to take some of my roux, which is flour, butter, and oil, and start adding this in there so it incorporates inside the, there, get it that nice thickness. It's got a little paprika, you know, hint of cayenne pepper. Are we just going to no. stir that? Usually I try to uh, put my flour stuff in when it's cold, but it never worked right, so you put it in when it's hot. Yeah. Season is at uh, my spicy heat. This is uh, Carolina Reapers <laughs> and cayenne pepper, a dash of paprika as well. Tell my son it's going to bite you. Well, if you add it in right, it should just give you compliments of flavors. Now, if you want it to bite, then yeah, you keep on adding until it's overflow, but you want the flavors to always complement each other. <sighs> Let's have a peek, shall we? Oh my goodness. Hey, Larry, you wanna that stir that? that is Great. Man, can't beat the smell that's coming from here. <laughs> Especially the sausage. Sausage and the onions and the butter. Now, the sausage was pretty much done already. Right. You want to, here. You want to get at a, a taste. That's a real. All that, that is, flavor. That's beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> All that flavor. Right that there. That is beautiful. All right, Larry, I want you to go ahead and uh, add that milk in there for me, please. Okay. We're just going to gently massage it in. Yes, massage her in. So you got the water, the meat, and everything in there boiling. We're going to go from that 
and drop right in here. And then Larry, if you wouldn't mind stirring this in, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this All righty, I'll do that for you. I'm turning this back down, the, this eye that had the frying pan. Well, the crab looks nice. So I'm gonna put some butter in here once this frying pan gets back up to temp and I got that up to high. Now normally, uh, when I'm using doing mussels and clams and stuff like that, I got a nice red wine that I use to help open them up. But in this situation, I'm just gonna do a little butter, little oil, and a hint of uh, vinegar. You know, and it's an apple cider vinegar. Okay, so. and vinegar does what to it? Taste. Taste. I'm a flavor guy. Butter really helps the flavor of, of seafood. And I got some lemon. This is uh, Louis seafood seasoning. All that's got in there is a little seasoning salt, a little okay. lemon pepper, you know. Okay. Um, some of the greater tastes for your, your seasoning for seafood. Okay. And as you already know, <clears throat> I got the clam meat in here. Yes. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna put the, the other clam in here with the butter and the mussels. Cause this is pretty much done. So this is just gonna preheat the other clam to which is almost done. Already. And the mussels, yes. Okay. I'm actually turning this on high. Ooh, we. It's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to whisk. And turn it down. Look at that, Larry. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh, it is. And here, add a little more root to thicken it up. The rest of it. Okay. Because these are thicker pieces, you want to make sure that, no, no, I'm going to leave them the same size. Uh -huh. But I want to make sure they get cooked thoroughly, so now I'm putting them in. Because we got at least another five or ten minutes for the, sea, the rest of the seafood. That on this nice high level should get these cooked right. Now I'm going to add that apple cider vinegar in. Ooh. And this is a crushed red pepper. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in the seafood, the rest of the seafood here. As you can see, it's frozen. I have the uh, pot on high. We're just going to go ahead and Golden let meal. it steam cook. Steam and butter, little lemon, little apple cider vinegar, crushed red pepper. Would you mind giving that a stir for me? I wouldn't mind. Look at how that pretty, oh, yeah, yes. pretty shrimp colored. You got that the gorgeous, muscles the up. mussels are opening up, the clams opening up. You can smell that seafood flavor. And now, you know, the meat's already done. Right. You know, because like I said, it didn't take that long for it to cook. We could actually go ahead and put this in, a, in our pot now. And nice and slow. All that good stuff. You got all your meats. Vegetables included. And vegetables. Yeah, I can't forget the vegetables. Can't forget all your meat. Look at that. Oh, look at that cornbread, Larry. God, it looks so good. Whoo wee! That's that uh, jalapeno cornbread, jalapeno huh? Cornbread. So what do you do now with it? I, usually I take it and slice it up. After I, I already did butter the top of it. Usually I take it and slice it up and. I don't see no butter, corners. Larry. I think we need to well, put some more I butter on it. I more butter to it. I think we got to <laughs> <laughs> add more butter to it. All right. We add Everything more butter tastes to it. better with butter. Everything tastes better with butter. All right. 
We add layers of butter on it. Ooh, look how it's melting. That nice hot piece of bread. That's right. And those big boys don't uh don't go chintzy on the butter. So go ahead and write us now. Facebook us. Tell us what you thought about the butter. A lot of calories. <laughs> we ain't thinking about calories today. <laughs> So yeah, like us on Facebook, share us with friends. Let us know what you think about the show. Well, I usually take it and cut it down three sections. Down one corner, down the other corner, which is cutting pretty good. That's real nice. That go crossway cut. See if we can get all this good stuff in one little bow. Got your roux. Where's a uh... need a bigger scoop? <laughs> <laughs> some sausage and some clam there. And there you have it, folks. Uh, gumbo and jalapeno cornbread made by Larry and yours truly. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs>